you can do this. How do you do it? That's the trick. How do you do it? And I feel like, really, after writing this book for the first time in my adult life, I finally get like what Jesus was actually saying about love like that, what Paul was saying about love like that. I think it is doable more than we ever realized. I got to tell you, this is a book unlike any other book I've, you know, written because it it's at the core of our deepest longings. At least if, if you're following Christ, you want to know, how do I love like Jesus? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that just seems like s saying to somebody, hey, go cr climb Mount Everest, yeah. you know, and, and yeah. start tomorrow. Yeah. I don't even know where to begin. It's just so, and, and I remember as we were flying down here, I, you know, you, ha you have those quiet times on an airplane sometimes when you don't have them otherwise because you can't get interrupted. And I was reading in my devotions years before I wrote this out of Ephesians 5, hmm. And I read this, this little passage. It's on a page in the book. It says, observe how Christ, this is Paul talking. He says, observe how Christ loved us. His love was not cautious, but extravagant. All right. He didn't love in order to get something from us, but to give everything of himself to us. Mm -hmm. All right. And then Paul puts in this little three word sentence, almost like flippantly, it sounds like to me. Love like that. Mm. Love like that? Are you kidding me? <laughs> How do you love like that? That just seemed like, it, it just, I've read it a million times, you know, and, and, and yet it just jumped out at me. How do you love like that? Because that's really what the gospel is all about. Yeah. That's why we follow Jesus, to love like Jesus. And so as a psychologist, I remember I came home from that trip uh -huh. and I told Leslie, I said, I've got something in me that has to be quenched. I have a thirst to understand in pragmatic terms and not just with my mind and not quoting scripture. And I, I, how do you really live that out? Because it seems like the bar is so high, yeah. so unobtainable. I don't, I don't know how to do that. You know, and when Paul said that, he wasn't dealing with contested elections and racial, <laughs> you know, issues like we had. And, and I don't think there was a pandemic ravaging the earth at that time. <laughs> so that's why this book is so meaningful to us. And we're about to unpack the whole thing. Well, yeah, it is. And I, I wish that I could sit here and say, hey, guess what? I, I, I got it locked in. I've done it. You know, I've figured it out. We're all in process. Mm -hmm. But I do feel like I found some really pragmatic stepping stones that can get you closer than ever. I feel like it's doable. That's okay. one thing I learned in this process. When Jesus talked to us about loving like he loves, mm -hmm. it wasn't some poetic notion mm -hmm. of, hey, wouldn't that be awesome? Wouldn't that be cool? No, he, he was saying, you can do this. Mm -hmm. How do you do it? That's the trick. How do you do it? And I feel like Really, after writing this book for the first time in my adult life, I finally get like what Jesus was actually saying about love like that, what Paul was saying about love like that. I think it is doable more than we ever realized in the nitty gritty of our relationships with our spouse mm -hmm. and with our kids and with our colleagues and with even strangers. We can love like Jesus better than we probably think we can. Beautiful. Okay. Chapter one uh, says mindful. Yeah. Um, what does that mean? So, so here's, here's what I did. I looked at, at the intersection between what Christ taught and some salient moments in his life to come up with what are these things. And I came up with five. This is not an exhaustive list. There's lots of things that you can do to, to love like Jesus. But I came up with five. And the first one is to be mindful. Because one thing we know about Jesus was he, he, he was able to see things that other people didn't see. Yeah. And that only happens when you're mindful. So think about, let that sink in just for a little second there. To be, if you want to love like Jesus, you've got to see what other people don't see. There you go. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Leslie and I, you know, we used to teach at a university in Seattle. And, and I used to love doing this little exercise with my, my class. I had about 300 students in this auditorium for general psychology. And sometimes you'd go teach that with me. And anyway, I'd have these students come in on one day and it's a, it was a lecture on perception. And I showed this little video. Have you heard of this video about the, the gorilla mm -hmm. in basketball? Do you know that, that story? Yes, because you know it we from read the book. I read the book. I guess yeah. so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I Right surprised. answer, yes. Wow. <laughs> 
So I show this little video, and it's two teams. One's wearing black shirts, one's white shirts, and uh, they're passing a basketball around. And I tell the students, hey, count how many times the guys in the white shirts throw the basketball. This is going to be like for just two minutes of a video. And so these 300 students, they all get locked in on the screen. It's this huge screen in the room, and, and they watch it. And it ends. And so I step back off on, onto the stage, and I said, so how many of you saw the gorilla? And they all start to look around like, Dr. Parrott's lost it. He's hallucinating. <laughs> Wait, well, he didn't take his medication today. What's going on, you know? And, and uh, I said, let me show it to you again. But this time, don't count. Just watch the video. It's the exact same video. And I show it. And about uh, 10 seconds into these guys throwing the basketball around, this guy in a gorilla suit walks into frame, stands in the middle, beats his chest, and then walks off frame. Well, the students, some of them start dying laughing. Some are, are aghast, they, they're speechless. And some of them start to accuse me of showing a different video, video right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But this is a really famous study, it came out of Harvard. Okay. It's been replicated in all kinds of different ways. And it's, it's a, a perception, it illustrates perceptual blindness that so many times we don't see what's right in front of us. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we have an agenda, we have a task, right? And our agendas, when we're not mindful, keep us from loving like Jesus. We have an agenda. What are you gonna do after this show, right? Mm -hmm. What are you gonna do tomorrow? Well, you, you have an agenda about everything that's perpetually being updated that keeps us being mindful. Our agendas preoccupy us yeah. and they draw our attention away from being perceptive in the right. moment. And Jesus was perceptive beyond. And right. that's, that's kind of this quality. Yeah, and it's, it's a little bit like uh, I sometimes equate it to wearing mirrored sunglasses. And uh, like you, you take in the lenses out and you flip them around and you put them back in the frames and you look out at the world and all you see are your, your own needs everywhere mm -hmm. you go, right? And we just kind of get used to that. Um, and Jesus said, no, if you want to love like that, he said, be mindful. See, look for things other people aren't seeing. Wow. And one great example of that is the story of Zacchaeus. And so we, we all grew up with that, that story. And um, if you look at it as an adult and, and you, you look at, at what must have taken place there, the, this man that everybody despised, he was a tax collector, totally despised in those days because of the Jewish culture and so forth. Well, they were considered total betrayers. They were getting rich on the backs of their own. Right, and yeah. so, so Jesus comes into town and there's so much commotion about this, 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 this prophet, this guy that is saying these incredible things. And so Zacchaeus wants to get a look at him and he comes in. And, and so he, as we all know, he climbs up the tree to get a better look and maybe to hide even, we don't know. He might've mm -hmm. wanted to be not seen uh, because everybody despised him so much. And so Jesus comes into the, the situation and utters one word, Zacchaeus, what? Can you imagine being called out like that? And, uh, and he saw something in that man that everybody else despised that nobody else saw. He saw a broken man. He saw a man that was tired of living the way that he was. He saw a man that was tired of being selfish, a tired of, uh, of being... You know, Dishonest. Yes, yeah. and, and, and called him out and said, you know, hey, let's go to Starbucks. Let's sit mm -hmm. down. Let's talk this thing through a little bit, you know? Mm -hmm. And you can't do that unless you're mindful. So Jesus is showing us being mindful yeah. beyond the obvious, beyond your own agenda, beyond yeah. your busy day, your schedule. Stop, notice somebody, do something out of the order. That's loving like Jesus. If you want to love like Jesus, you've got to see what other people don't see. Right. And that's usually what's right in front of you. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go out looking for ways Beating to love like Jesus. Beating its chest in a right. sense. Right, right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How many saw the gorilla? But it's, it's when you come home at the mm -hmm. end of the day, and you see your, your toddler on the, on the floor mm -hmm. and you have an agenda because I got to get to my email or I got to get to this other thing or I got to get what, what's for dinner, whatever. But it's putting down your stuff and taking off your shoes and getting down on that floor with that little toddler and being present. Mm -hmm. That's loving like Jesus. That's holy ground right yeah. there, right? It's not a big extravagance. Sometimes we think, oh, if we're going to love like Jesus, I got to... I better Google that. Yeah. I gotta, you know, figure out some huge Start thing. Start an I'm organization. Do. Yes, yeah. exactly. Gallant gestures. But we do it yeah. in big ways and small ways. But it begins. You're exactly right. It begins by seeing what other people don't see, and that's being mindful. Mm -hmm.